Welcome to 4E Radio, where the gospel's for the believer and the unbeliever alike. That's you, me, Troy, and everyone out there. And that's what we're talking about today. Ooh, Ooh right? Throwing down the gauntlet already. Yeah, everyone. we're getting it out there. All we're, right. Is the gospel actually for everyone or just for certain people? And uh, that's that's a big question. We're yes, going to get yes. to that in just a minute. But before we get to that, <laughs> did I mention who I am? I'm Craig D'Onofrio, pastor of St. James Lutheran Church in the Old Brooklyn neighborhood of Cleveland, Ohio. Yes, you are. Yes. I'm uh, Troy Neer, pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church, Shaker Heights, Ohio. Correct. Yeah, thank you. And we are also a uh, podcast and broadcast of 1517.org. I encourage you to go to 1517.org, check out all of their broadcast and podcast by the way in october the here we still stand conference in san diego is coming up sold out within 18 days almost a year ago now i mean yeah. it's crazy how fast it sold out i can't even go because i didn't get tickets no neither is troy going but right. they are planning on streaming it oh online okay. so okay uh coming up Check it out on 1517.org. I don't know the exact date, but it's in October. And uh, it'll be two or three days, and there will be all sorts of wonderful streaming uh, lectures and events going on in San Diego. So all right, check that out. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. If you want to email us. D yeah, you can do that. What? What? Where would they uh, put their... Computer right. printed to yeah. exactly there. <laughs> well, you would take it off the streaming software and open up the email software instead, and you're going to go to uh, uh, for you radio at fifteen seventeen dot org. Yes, uh -huh. thank you. And you can go to for you radio dot org. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that will direct you to oh, oh, fifteen seventeen. Oh. Speaking of which, by the way, now yes. uh, I, I've been seeing this lately. Um, I keep forgetting, but we're on YouTube as well. Yeah, that's right. Yes, uh, now. Don't don't be alarmed, dear listener. It's not not any video. We're not we're not recording video live. No, we we have faces it. for radio. Yeah, these, yeah. These are but, mugs uh, made for radio. Not... <laughs> but a lot of people. Uh, I, I'm seeing more and more people commenting about how they're listening on YouTube, which is really interesting. So okay, so go look us up on YouTube for you radio. Yes, indeed. There we go. Do that. Uh, anything else, Troy? Are we are we good to? Uh, no, I'm good. Launch you go in. Ahead. I'm going to just sit back and enjoy the show now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, as I mentioned at the beginning, the gospel of Jesus Christ is for you. It's for the whole world, right? And yet, the Bible talks about election. And that would indicate that maybe some people are not uh, called to Christ. Or are they? That's the question <sighs> du jour, right? Uh, this is one of those things that separates a lot of church bodies is this question of election and predestination and how does it work? So there are a lot of different thoughts out there, but I want to start with this before we get into anything else. I want to return to something that we've talked about repeatedly, and that's the magisterial and ministerial use of reason. Now, those are big 50 cent words, but what that means is the magisterial use of reason reason stands in majesty and so that is the ultimate and so unfortunately what happens is you read the bible and you say well if that's the case then this is the case and you go beyond scripture too much and you run into problems and you end up with all sorts of problems of the authority of scripture because now your reason is above scripture we on the other hand uh, try and we fail, but we try to use a ministerial use of reason. That is, the scripture is kind of like a ceiling. This is God's word. God is right. If you want to believe it or not, it's inconvenient, but it's God's word. And our logic and our reason can only go up to that ceiling and stop there. Okay. And we say, and, and that's where we end up in things like paradox, where we scratch our heads and go, huh, isn't that weird? And we understand that God's understanding, God's reasoning, God's ways are greater than ours. And so we are to be subject to God in all things. And that means sometimes we need to learn when to just be quiet and, and not <laughs> keep speculating, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's a hard thing because we want to speculate. We want to understand sure. more. We, we okay. really want to go into those things 
where God is basically saying, well, you know what? I'm telling you this much and no more. And so this is where we have to start, I think, is our reason must be subject to Scripture. Okay, so uh, and I just got to back up a half step uh, because of those terms you use, and you keep, I know you've thrown them out there several times, and I keep dwelling upon different ways to describe those as well. The magisterial use of reason, ministerial use of reason. Right. Uh, and again, it's, it's so you're saying it's where uh, those two terms describe where we place our reason. Right. So uh, in the ministerial use of our reason or our ability to think, uh, that is used uh, in service to scriptures. Right. Uh, so a minister is a servant. A ministerial use is a serving Ooh, good, use. Good, yeah. Okay. I like that. So a magisterial use is a ruling use. Uh, your majesty, right? I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Very you good. Got okay. Okay. And uh, and so, so th- this is one of those things where when our reason contradicts scripture, we go to scripture. We 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 default yeah. to scripture. We say nope. Uh, if if my reason is standing in opposition, then I need to. Like I said, we need to learn when to stop and when to just simply let God's word stand. Yes, uh, no matter what we think. Now I, I do have to add to that because um, uh, there are a number of people who. Um, it really, I think it depends upon your own personal theological bent. You know, do you really like to dive deep into this stuff, or uh, these nuances? Uh, you know, the needle in the haystack sort of stuff is yeah. it just overwhelming? Uh, and so there are people who uh, very early cut that off and say, you know what, that's just too much. I'm just going to trust the word, and I don't need to talk about all that. Uh, but there also will be well-meaning and uh, very good people who say, no, no, there's there's more here that we can plumb uh, deeper in the scriptures. Always guided by the scriptures, but we can look at this deeper and deeper and deeper. Right. Uh, so neither one of those is wrong necessarily, but uh, but there's still, as you said, does come a time when both people uh, need to say, no, that's gone too far. Right. And, so it, it, philosophy and all that stuff, it's great. It's wonderful. And mm-hmm. sometimes sometimes it lines up with Scripture and sometimes it doesn't. Sure. Sometimes okay. it stands in opposition to Scripture, and that's when okay. you really want to worry. Uh, Martin Luther, when he was uh, given all of his writings and everything and told you need a recant of all of this he said, well wait a minute here some of this is just simply biblical stuff you know it's it's talking about how god created and you know all these sorts of things i can't recant that i can't retract that stuff and some of this stuff i'm not real proud of i i can give up on that and some of it I, i'm willing to fight for and he says unless you can show me by simple reason or the word of god oh. right Yes. So so God has given us reason to use. Yes. It's not like we're supposed to just check it at the door, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Jesus wants your heart. He, he he left you your brain to use, right? So <laughs> he um, also wants your brain. But <laughs> but I was saying That sounds really weird. You know, Jesus wants your brains. I always, what? I always like that uh who is it? Ravi Zacharias who had the Let My People Think Ministries. I forget. I think it was I him. forget. But I always like that line, Let uh, My People Think. Yeah. And so it's important that we're thinking. But it's also important that our thinking is subject to Scripture. You know, and I think um, I think there we're going to use that yeah, word. Good job. Uh, so I th- I think there there is a point where we can determine at, at where we need to cut off this discussion. Right. Uh, there is a very clear point where we say we can go this far and no farther. Right. Uh, and that point is, um, it, it, well, it's a lot like uh, like the conversation God has with Job. You know where mm. where God is grilling Job in chapter thirty eight and and following I think and basically saying um, Job are, are you God do you know all of these things can you tell me uh, can you tell me about the creation of the earth can you tell me about you know exactly how that worked out uh, who who sunk the uh, foundations for the earth uh, and what we're getting into there that line is the secret life or the hidden will of God. Right. So the stuff that is that, that he chooses not to tell us for whatever reason, uh, the stuff that's hidden from us, that is the pretty clear point in which we got to stop and say, I cannot plumb that because I have no way of looking into what is hidden in God's heart. Yeah. I can only see what God has revealed. Right. So I, I always say, you know, some some people say, well, God has a few answers to prayer. There's yes, there's no, there's not yet. And then I always add, yeah. there's none of your business, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm up to something here, and right. you may not even see what it is in your lifetime, and it's none of your business. I'm using you. 
And, uh, you know, I don't really need your permission. I'm God. I can use you no matter what. So really none of your business. And uh, sometimes that brings you peace. (laughs) Or as I like to say, when God, you know, people say when God closes a door, he opens a window. I say, no, when he closes a door, he closes a window and then he's got you where he wants you. (laughs) That's it. Uh, I I consider that the, uh, the duly noted response to prayer it yeah. <laughs> right yeah <laughs> lord god i just can't like it duly noted yeah now carry on thank like, you for what? your input <laughs> yes. moving on uh so we've spent a third of the program just talking about how to use reason properly and and that's important because what we are about to get into yeah. people have have gone berserk over this and Oof, yeah, gone yeah. way too far i think so so the question is this Mm-hmm. If Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, yes, and there are people who go to hell, yes, then did God not choose them? Whew. And the Bible talks about there being an elect, right? Mm-hmm. So how do we how do we deal with all of this? That there's an elect, and yet God calls all. He he he, he wills that none should perish, but all should have eternal life. Okay, and yet. People perish and don't have eternal life, and so how, how do we yes. how do we harmonize this? And right. so, you know, so we have the, we have theological cousins who have done all sorts of stuff. Uh, this this paradox here then is what between uh, uh, God's power and God's will is it between uh, universal grace and election? I mean, what are we what are we kind of really struggling with here? Well, I, I would say universal grace and election is what okay. we're talking about in particular because. Okay. If Christ has called all to himself, uh, Mm -hmm. then our friends who are really into a double predestination kind of thing, God either predestined you to heaven or hell, then people are going to hell with their sins forgiven. Okay. And how can that be? Okay. And to us, we say it's simple because when Christ died, he took away the sins of the world and those who end up in, pur- or in purgation, or, or rather, I'm sorry, in in, in hell, really? are those who have, I know, I, I slipped, I went Roman Catholic for a second there. They are those who have yeah. rejected the gift, because gifts can be rejected. Okay, right? so this is a, why are some saved and others not question? Yeah. And even more troubling, um, God seems to have some sort of hand in that. Yeah. As we look at the scriptures. Right. right, right. Okay, all right, so... Uh, Go to some scriptures. Uh, show me. Can you show me some problems that we're looking at here? Uh, you know what? I've got. I've got one um, from Ephesians. Um, it's going to take me a minute to get there. So, why don't you uh, spitball okay. here for a so, second? So, so Romans nine is one that people okay. turn to quite often. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, Jacob, I love. Esau, I hated. Pharaoh, have I created as a vessel for uh, wrath? Yeah. Uh, and all of that. Uh, stuff where, where where is that here i'm, well, I'm looking right at it but you I can't find you it. find that i'm going to go to ephesians chapter 1 uh, verse um, 3 and 4 and 5 okay there we go uh so paul says to the uh, church in ephesus blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has blessed us in the beloved. Uh, so what we've got there, obviously, is uh, we're chosen from before the foundation of the world. So before creation, God has chosen us. He has predestined us uh, to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ. So, so there's God's choice there, his quite clear choice before the creation of the world. Okay, so this okay. is where our magisterial use of reason becomes a problem. Because yes. if he has predestined us to go to heaven, then those who go to hell, has he predestined them for eternal death? Well, see, now Paul doesn't say anything about that, right? Okay. He is talking to the believers, to the uh, the saints in the in the Ephesian church, or probably the Ephesian church is. Uh, I think that this is a letter that's kind of circulating around that larger Asian area there. Um, so he doesn't talk about you know those who are not chosen 
Uh, however, I think the implication is there that we would wonder then, well, if we are chosen, what about that guy who doesn't seem to be chosen? Right. And so, and that's, that's the problem, right? So we start thinking beyond uh, what we are already told in scriptures. So, you know, the, the question also arises then, what about the guy who is in Mongolia in uh, 71 AD and he never had the chance to hear the gospel? <sighs> And uh, you had to go there. Didn't yeah. You? Is, okay. is he not elect? Is, is he not called by Christ? Did Christ not die for his sins too? How does that work? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And no one's come and told him the good news. Yes. What happens to that guy? <sighs> what do you wish me to say to this? I have an answer. <laughs> okay. What's your answer? I don't know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an okay Yay. thing to say. I yes, don't okay. know. That's between God and that guy. Uh, believe me, God loves him enough where he sent his son to die for him. And if God has another way, he hasn't told us about it, but that's God's business. Okay. Right? All right. And people say, well, well, you know, what about the tribesmen in South America that never, well, if you're that concerned, why don't you become a missionary and go tell them about Jesus? <laughs> you know, if, Oof. if, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a lot easier just to you know curse God and and to deny God. Yeah. By right? the way, uh, the Romans passage you're looking for is Romans eight, uh, twenty nine and thirty. Yeah, you know what happened yeah. is I brought up Romans nine and First John two at the same time, and I was looking oh, for the okay. Romans nine section, First okay. John two. Oh, I see. Which is okay. something typical for me. So Romans yeah. eight uh, twenty nine. Uh, you know, I'm actually going to back up to twenty eight to be honest here. Uh, uh, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. Those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Right. So uh, again, I think you're going to point out that uh, the problem here appears to be but what about those who are not? Right. And you know what? I still got to fall back on what Paul has said. Okay. What has he said? He's not said a thing about that. <laughs> Again, he's talking to believers uh, who's, who, who want the comfort of knowing that God has chosen them. And what's he doing? That he's giving them that comfort. Why, why do I feel like we need to have Perry Como in the background through this whole thing? You've got to accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. I Be, because all song. of these are okay. positive statements that mm -hmm. Paul's saying, right? There we go. Okay. These, the, and this is the secret behind election and predestination. When it's mentioned in Scripture, it's promise and hope for those who are in Christ. It is yes. not condemnation for those other people. Okay. That's not the way that it's used. It's used as promise and hope for you. Okay. Because don't you know that Jesus Christ has died for you? He has called you. He is he's okay. the Lamb of God from the foundations of the world. Christ chose you. So and and so have comfort and have courage and have strength in all adversity and, and all persecution and everything else. Christ has elected you to be his own. But he's not saying, and those suckers over there, you know, <laughs> right, forget okay. them. He's not saying that. Right? So here, here's again where we can go this far and no farther. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, but uh, Paul's speaking these words to these believers, and he's speaking them as words of comfort. Um, and I did honestly go through a phase one time where I was like, predestination, huh? What if I'm not predestined? Yeah. So how, how do I get this comfort that Paul wants to give me? Well, I think that it's found in the fact that Jesus Christ is the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Okay, And uh, I, I think you find comfort in passages like 1 John 2. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments, right? So he is the propitiation, the mercy seat, the 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 sacrifice yeah. for your sins, and not just for yours, but also for the whole world. 
And so, so you can have comfort in knowing that Christ is your redeemer. And okay. let me let me tell you this also. He has elected you. He, he has elected you from the foundations of the world. He has made you his own. So have okay. comfort. Be secure in your salvation, right? All right. So here's what I hear you saying. Uh, if we go to the revealed words of scripture, in this case 1 John. Right. I can look in there and I can evaluate myself according to that. Did Christ die for me? Yes. I just got to first find out the answer. Am I in the world? I am. Okay, I just checked. Here I am. Uh, And therefore, Christ uh, has forgiven all my sin. Yes. In his death on the cross. Yes. Now, we go to other scriptures uh, where we talk about uh, various things uh, where, okay, do I believe in this? And those scriptures say, if you believe in this, you have what you believe in. You have this death of Christ that is your his vicarious atonement. Um, and then also, too, uh, we can also go to uh, the revelation of God's will in the, uh, let's say, the sacraments. like So baptism, yeah, where uh, 1 Peter uh, says that baptism now saves you. That God has washed away your sins through baptism in this 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 concrete historical physical event that you can actually point to and say, yeah, I had that in my life. Yeah. So uh, so we've got these things from the revealed word of Scripture that then you're saying they should inform me as to what the hidden will of God was from before creation. Well, it's the revealed wor- will of God, right? It's revealed to you in Scripture. Okay, all right. So, so his, his will is revealed to you that none should perish, that all should have eternal life, that Jesus Christ okay. is the propitiation, the, the, the atoning sacrifice for your sins, not for yours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay. And our, our friends who get obsessed with double predestination, what they do with this is a very magical dance that you see. <laughs> and and they say, well, see, Christ is a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of people like us from every tribe and nation. Oh, I see. Okay. But what does the text say? Does the text say that? No, it does not say that. It says the whole world. And so, yes, the tragic thing is, and what makes hell even more hellish is that the people who go there, go there because they have rejected their Savior. What kind Mm. of a loving God sends people to hell? He doesn't. We send ourselves to hell. Mm. What kind of a loving God would force people that despise him to spend all of eternity with him? That's the better question, right? If you really despise God that much and you are determined Mm -hmm. to spend eternity without him, then you can. And that's horrifying. Utterly horrifying. So the uh, the comfort I am seeking then from this doctrine of uh, election or predestination, um, that comes from the revealed word of God. Yes. And that is where I take my comfort. Uh, that is where I know that Christ died for me. That is the word that I believe in, that I trust in, that external word that has come to me. Right. Uh, the, uh, the hidden stuff um, then is revealed in that word. Yes. And then also in that word then, uh, like you, you were kind of being facetious about it, but it's very true, in that revealed word of God, I then also have uh, the privilege and even the duty to tell other people of this Jesus. Yes. So that they too might know that they are among the elect, that they have their sins forgiven by Jesus Christ. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and that is keeping his command that he talks mm-hmm. about in verse 3 here. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. What is his his commandments? Look at the Great Commission. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them. Uh, But even still, if you look at the Ten Commandments, it's the desire of the Christian to not sin, to to not violate God's law. (laughs) And the question is, you know, how well do I do that? And the answer is, I don't very well at all and that's why i have a savior and that's why i keep running back to jesus christ the righteous one who is my advocate who is the propitiation for my sins and why i keep running back to him over and over again why i keep confessing my sins daily because in that i find that i have a savior oh so i keep uh, i do work diligently in my life then um to live according to the will of god to confirm our call Right. Yes. To, yeah. Uh, to to uh, but the whole will of God is 
one, keep his commandments, but also repent. Yes. Trust in me for all of that stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, the, this weird paradox, and I think uh, we end up laying it down in by a first looking at this doctrine of election and even particular election uh, from the Holy Word of God, from the Scriptures themselves. Right. Uh, we uh, we set aside uh, that question of, but why aren't some people saved? Uh, insisting that God has not condemned them, but they condemn themselves. Yep. Uh, and then also to ultimately we say that Christ has died for the sins of the entire world. So, and, and we'd like you to know about that. Right. Okay. So th- the deal with election is not to say I'm in and you're out, but the deal with election is to say I'm in and I want you to be in with me here. There you go. And, nice. and not be a Pharisee and say, oh, those people. Instead, we people, we are all forgiven in Christ. Your sins are atoned for. And so we can look at everyone and proclaim that Jesus Christ and him crucified is for you. He's done it all for you. I see what you did there. If you're listening to this and you can hear (laughs) this, that's the good news. Christ is your savior. He is your atoning sacrifice. He is the propitiation for all of your sins. Till next time, God's peace. For You Radio is a 1517.org production. To listen to this radio broadcast and podcasts and broadcasts like this one, I invite you to visit 1517.org. There you will also find many publications and free resources, including classes on Christian apologetics, church history, philosophy, and so much more. We are completely funded by generous donors like you. Would you consider making a generous gift to our work of spreading the gospel? Simply visit 1517.org.